Let's think about Tesla Energy in terms of vehicles. Yes. For a minute. Okay, so this is a little table here that takes the mega pack business, which the current capacity of the Lathrop factory, as stated, is 40 gigawatt hours mm -hmm. or 40,000 megawatt hours. Purchase price of a mega pack is about a million bucks, give or take. Sure. The factory revenue at capacity would be $10.2 billion at today's current prices. Mm hmm. And if we take the gross margin from Tesla Energy of 24.6 from Q1, that's two and a half billion of gross profit. Right. So what's the equivalency of that in terms of vehicles? So if I'm using the Model Y as kind of, you know, the, the vehicle of choice to compare to, uh -huh. and if I take the gross margin in autos of 18 and a half percent, and I say that also is the gross margin for Model Y, that, that may or may not be true. Right. But 18.5%, that gets you to auto revenue of $13.6 And if the average purchase price of the Model Y is, say, $45,000, just use a round number, you're about 300000 Model Y equivalents as far as the Lathrop Megapack factory capacity. Right. Okay. Now, we know that the margins on Tesla Energy are going to go up. Right. Right. We just don't know how much, but if they went up to 28 and a half percent, now you're at about 351, 50,000 vehicle equivalents. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay. And then finally, we know that they're building a mega pack battery in Shanghai. Right. They're going to double the capacity to 80,000 megawatt hours. Using the same margin assumptions from the prior slide. Now we're at about 700,000 vehicles. Okay. Model wise. Sure. Sure. Okay, but taking one step further, let's look at it in terms of the future compact car. Mm -hmm. It's about a million of those. Okay, if, if they're priced at 31,500 sure. a piece. The average, yes. Uh -huh. The $25,000 car yeah. with inflation, maybe 31,000. Or with, uh, you know, more expensive versions. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just interesting to kind of look at the equivalency of energy storage versus the vehicles. This isn't perfect, but it, I think sure. it's instructive to sort of show the capacity that, that they're building on the energy side, what, what that means for vehicles. Yes. Right. It's 700 to a million ish vehicles, depending on what you want to use. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, you may not want to do this. I've talked about it quite, quite a number of times on the show. I, I do the same thing with semis. Uh, people talk in terms of, well, you know, semi, well, someday, you know, there might be. But the truth is, is that, you know, one $200,000 semi uh, at probably much larger margins than cars, add in a little bit extra for, okay, maybe even double for infrastructure that would have to be purchased to go along with it. And, you know, it takes a, a very few semi trucks to equal a bunch of cars. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, the semi one day will be a very significant business. Yeah. The sad thing about the semi is no one may notice it because of developments in Tesla's other businesses like yeah, RoboTaxi and Boss. That's definitely going to be a problem. Although semi yeah. will be a big contributor to that because I'm sure it won't cost $8,000 to get FSD on a semi. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, this is breaking news. Uh, this is from Morgan Stanley today. Yes. <laughs> Um, and so they, they're, you know, what, what wall street likes to do is have client lunches, lots of client lunches. So looking, talking about 20 client lunch attendees here. Anyway, the vast majority of these attendees said they did not own Tesla stock in their portfolios in any meaningful size. Wow. Right. And Tesla is one of the largest companies wow, in the market. The planet. Right. And they've decided to not own it wow. in meaningful size. Now, I don't know what meaningful size means, yeah, yeah, but. Yeah. It definitely would mean not overweighting Tesla, and it's probably be probably significantly underweight in their portfolios. Okay, um, and so you know, he says here the struggling car business, which is ninety percent of revenues, <laughs> can be measured and tracked. The AI, robotics, FSD slash robotaxi, and much of the energy business is seen as too small to matter. 
or does not produce the same quantum of weekly slash monthly information to be tracked. Yeah. Right. This is why these guys don't own it because they, they don't understand it. And they, they don't have access to information that i.e. they don't want to think. We've well, we've talked about this before. Famously, it was the general electric problem. Uh, that's probably the one that's talked about in the SBA program, the SBA, the uh, MBA programs, mm -hmm. uh, where they started splitting the company up because the small divisions were not getting any value, even though those small divisions, if the standalones were in the top 500 companies in the world. Yeah. 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 The market goes through phases of that. Uh, there was an era in the 70s where big conglomerates actually were highly valued in the marketplace. Mm hmm. And then it kind of flipped the other way, but um, yeah. So they also go on to say here that the core energy business barely came up at all in their discussions. For 90 minutes, we talked about energy storage, humanoids, AI, FSD, China, geopolitics, and the robot taxi day. So, um, and he slips in there, invitation still not received. <laughs> <laughs> I, I suppose he's hoping that the Elon is reading this or somebody on the Tesla right, team. Exactly. <laughs> um, so he goes on, Tesla has long been absent from the broader market discussion about AI for much of this year. Tesla is a car company, but in our opinion, it's just now starting to get more institutional investor attention about its other capabilities, including energy, manufacturing, AI, and robotics. Cars are just one of many form factors of embodied AI robotics. Randy, I think this this guy out of Jonas must be listening to you and I on your on your show <laughs> and others. Um, you know, he said he goes on. Investors will continue to appreciate Tesla's ability to collect monumental amounts of data that can be used to improve AI and its AI and, and robotics capabilities. So CERN, you know, I, you know, I'm not a big time author. You know, I've just had a few niche books. Uh, you know, but uh, in November of 2022, these guys could have picked up a copy of the Elon Musk mission. Yep. We laid it all out for them, even Optimus. Right. It was all in there. We talked about the energy storage. We were the first one, anybody, nobody in November of 2022 was talking about energy storage, not even in, in the X community, not on the YouTube committee, community, but the book broke the Lathrop story. Um, but all of it was in the book about Optimus, about uh, RoboTaxis, the whole nine yards, and pretty much is playing out almost exactly as we talked about. So, um, you know. Randy, your mistake was hiding it in plain sight. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. So speaking about energy, um, the Lathrop factory, 40 gigawatt hours of capacity could generate profit equivalent to as many as 1 million Tesla vehicles. Right. <laughs> I'm starting to think this guy's reading my posts. Absolutely. Right. But this is kind of interesting. He, he says that the, that the Lathrop factory is a former Daisy Penny distribution center. We've talked right. about that. Right. Uh, it's only 436,000 square feet. Right. Contrast that with a 10 million square foot Giga Texas battery, right? Yep. So if you're, you know, if you've got an opportunity to expand your energy business, the footprint of that is much smaller. So anyway, I thought that was interesting. Yeah, and it's in a flip. It's a it's a tilt up. I mean, you could build another one next to it. Uh, you know, in seven months, I watch it all the time here in the Inland Empire. You just you know, they tilt these babies up in no time. Yep.